The events of February 24, 2022, when Russian troops launched an unexpected attack on Ukraine, marked a concerning turn in world politics. Russian President Vladimir Putin's warning about dire consequences for any interference set the stage for a conflict that left a trail of destruction and displacement. Russian military forces, including helicopters and fighter jets, were witnessed flying low over Ukrainian cities, launching rockets at various locations. The primary target of this assault was the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Tragically, hundreds of lives were lost, and millions of Ukrainians were forced to flee their homes. In a desperate bid for safety, many sought refuge in basements and metro stations. Europe found itself embroiled in its first significant conflict since World War II. This aggression has left many puzzled, as Russia's landmass is nearly 27 times larger than Ukraine's. So why is Russia so interested in Ukraine, and what does Putin stand to gain? To understand this complex situation, we need to delve into history. Ukraine was a part of Russia for nearly a century, during which it experienced various rulers, including the Romanov dynasty. However, by the early 1900s, discontent with the Russian monarchy had reached its peak. The Russian Revolution of 1917 brought an end to the Romanov dynasty, leading to a new era for the Russian Empire. The aftermath of the revolution witnessed power struggles and a civil war in Russia. Eventually, in 1922, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, was established, comprising 13 different republics, including Russia and Ukraine. For Ukraine, this transition was like being moved from one cage to another. In the wake of World War II, Europe was split in two. The eastern part was under the firm grip of the Soviet Union, led by the USSR, while the Western powers, including Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States, controlled the other half. Although the world had witnessed the end of one of the most devastating conflicts in history, a new kind of struggle had begun, one driven by intense political rivalry. The most profound difference fueling the enmity between the United States and the Soviet Union was their fundamentally contrasting ideologies. The United States was a proponent of the capitalist system, an economic and political framework that valued individualism, private enterprise, and the free market. In countries aligned with the United States, capitalism was the driving force, propelling economic growth and shaping political structures. Conversely, within the USSR and its sphere of influence, the ideology of communism reigned supreme. This communist system was characterized by state ownership of the means of production, collective ownership, and central planning. The ideological divide between capitalism and communism was more than just an economic contrast. It was a clash of worldviews, with both sides perceiving the other as a threat to their way of life and political order. They were determined to spread this system far and wide, advocating for its adoption on a global scale. Conversely, the Soviet Union was steadfast in its commitment to propagating communism, seeking to see this ideology adopted worldwide. This fundamental disagreement ignited a protracted conflict known as the Cold War. The Cold War was far from a traditional military confrontation. Instead, the battle was fought through political machinations and ideological clashes, with both the Soviet Union and the United States actively undermining each other's interests. As the intensity of this ideological battle escalated, the need for military strength and alliances became apparent. In 1949, countries aligned with the United States came together to establish the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, known as NATO. Under the NATO agreement, it was decided that if any member country was subjected to an attack, all other member nations would come to its defense. This collective defense pact presented a considerable challenge to the Soviet Union, for if the NATO countries could stand together for mutual protection, they could also potentially mount a coordinated attack against the USSR. In response to the formation of NATO, the Soviet Union and its allies forged a similar pact known as the Warsaw Pact. 
These organizations served as defensive alliances to protect their member countries' interests and safeguard their security. Despite these alliances, the ideological chasm between capitalism and communism remained deep and insurmountable. This Cold War persisted for a grueling 42 years, with both superpowers engaged in a relentless effort to weaken one another, pushing towards the ultimate goal of one side emerging as dominant. In 1991, a new chapter unfolded in the tumultuous history of the region. Republics like Ukraine, which had been entangled in the complex web of geopolitics, came together to form the independent republics, marking the end of the Soviet era. The dissolution of the Soviet Union marked a significant turning point in the early 1990s, as it led to the emergence of several independent countries. For Ukraine, this pivotal moment meant the realization of its long-sought-after dream of independence. The newly independent countries, liberated from the shackles of Soviet rule, were finally free to chart their own destinies. They wasted no time in discarding the communist ideology that had been imposed upon them for decades. As the Soviet Union crumbled, Russia, once a global superpower, found itself weakened and marginalized on the world stage. In stark contrast, the alliance of Western powers led by the United States continued to grow stronger even in the aftermath of the Cold War. The year 1999 saw a significant geopolitical shift in Eastern Europe. Poland, the Czech Republic and Hungary, which had recently gained their independence from the Soviet Union, made a strategic choice to join NATO. This decision was a clear departure from the past, where they had been aligned with the Soviet Union and its Warsaw Pact. The trend of former Soviet republics and Eastern European countries joining NATO gained momentum over the following years. By 2004, additional nations had embraced NATO membership, realigning themselves with the Western powers. This realignment was particularly significant because it brought Russia's borders into direct contact with NATO territories for the first time. At this juncture, only three countries remained outside NATO's embrace, Belarus, Ukraine, and Georgia. Among these, Ukraine and Georgia had long expressed their desire to join NATO. Russia, however, viewed this prospect with deep suspicion, recognizing the potential threat it posed to its strategic interests. The primary concern for Russia was the possibility that NATO membership for Ukraine and Georgia could disrupt its access to the Black Sea, a crucial corridor for the country's oil and gas exports. Russia ranks as the third largest producer and exporter of oil and gas globally, and the Black Sea serves as a vital conduit for these resources to reach international markets. Amid these developments, Ukraine's ambitions extended beyond just NATO membership. In 2013, Ukraine also expressed its desire to join the European Union, EU. Notably at the time, Petro Poroshenko, who was Ukraine's president, was perceived as both friendly to Russia and embroiled in allegations of corruption. The president of Ukraine, when presented with the opportunity to sign a deal with the European Union, took an unexpected turn. Instead of aligning with the EU, the Ukrainian leader sought a bailout package from Russia, a decision that sent shockwaves across the international stage. In essence, he rejected the European Union's offer, pledging Ukraine's support for Russia in various matters. This act raised suspicions of corruption and foul play, with allegations of Russia exerting undue influence on the Ukrainian president, effectively bribing him to keep Ukraine out of the EU's orbit. This contentious move ignited a firestorm of public outrage as the news spread. Thousands of protesters took to the streets, their collective voice demanding one thing, Ukraine's integration into the European Union. The pressure mounted day by day, prompting the Ukrainian president to resort to a heavy-handed crackdown on the protesters. Tragically, this crackdown resulted in the loss of more than a hundred lives, further inflaming the situation. In the face of growing unrest and protests, the Ukrainian president found himself in a precarious position, ultimately leading to his departure from office and his subsequent flight to Russia.
In this period of political turmoil, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, sensed an opportunity and decided to act decisively. Putin, recognizing the opportunity, began to employ force as a means to assert Russian influence. Initially, the Russian military occupied the Ukrainian-controlled peninsula in the Black Sea, effectively changing the regional balance of power. Subsequently, with the support of separatist groups, Russia took control of two key Ukrainian regions, Donetsk and Luhansk, both located along the Russian border. Over the next eight years, these regions witnessed a tragic and protracted conflict, marked by extensive bloodshed, claiming the lives of over 14,000 individuals and displacing a staggering two million Ukrainians from their homes. The move to secure the independence of Donetsk and Luhansk from Ukraine worked to Putin's advantage, as it aligned with Russia's strategic interests. In November 2021, Putin's true intentions came to light. Satellite images revealed large numbers of Russian troops amassing along the Ukrainian border, raising alarm across the international community. The standoff between Russia and the Western world intensified as President Vladimir Putin made an audacious demand in November 2021. He called for NATO to roll back its military presence to the same extent as it stood in 1997, a demand swiftly rejected by Western leaders. Instead of de-escalating, both sides increased their military forces, raising tensions to a critical point. On one side, Russian troops encircled Ukraine, conducting large-scale military exercises along the border. Then, on February 21, 2022, Putin made a dramatic announcement. He declared Donetsk and Luhansk, two breakaway regions within Ukraine, as independent countries, and in the name of peacekeeping, the Russian Federation entered these regions. Meanwhile, Western leaders reiterated Ukraine's status as an independent country and emphasized that NATO membership was a sovereign choice beyond their control. Two days later, on February 24, 2022, Putin initiated a full-scale military invasion of Ukraine under the guise of a special military operation. The world watched in shock as this act of aggression unfolded, drawing condemnation from leaders across the globe. European Commission President, the UK Prime Minister and US President Joe Biden swiftly condemned Russia's actions, pledging accountability for Putin and Russia. Demonstrations erupted worldwide in support of Ukraine, with thousands taking to the streets in Russia itself. The gravity of the situation was underscored by the presence of Russian nuclear capabilities. Putin had previously issued ominous threats, warning against any interference in this crisis. However, rather than resorting to physical conflict, countries, including the United States, initiated economic sanctions against Russia. These measures were designed to cripple Russia's economy and hopefully compel Putin to reconsider his course of action. The outcome of this struggle remains uncertain, with implications that extend far beyond Eastern Europe, shaping the future of global politics.